hello, I am Jan from Prague, the Czech Republic. This is obviously not Prague, but the city of Siena in the heart of Tuscany. And we got some first spring sunshine, which gives us a great opportunity to test this camera in this lovely sceneries of green hills of Tuscany. So let's go there and test it. So what will you actually see in this video? First, I will try to define this camera and uh, sum up the key technical parameters. Then I will we'll show you the first batch of photos <laughs> just to give you a rough idea what should we expect. And we will go inside of it and through the live preview we will have a chance to see again more controls and also some key parameters of that camera in action like mostly uh, focusing and all these important things and eventually we'll just go to the hills and cities of Tuscany to see in more than 100 test photos what should we expect from the image quality of Canon R50. First let me define this camera. What should be said that it is really important camera because it's well doesn't really cost much uh, the results are really very good and it's also not too big so it is a, a great camera just to be taken for a holidays in Tuscany like I did and uh, why I consider that camera to be so important is the simple fact that this is exactly the type of camera that people would be buying if they say okay I just do not want to have only smartphone photos I would like to make a leap forward and then this is exactly the category of cameras which would make sense it's not expensive it's small and the results are really good if we sum up the key parameters, uh, it has obviously the APS-C sensor with 24,2 megapixels and uh, it can shoot up to 15 frames per second, which is actually quite decent, quite good. And one more detail, all the photos in this video were taken only with that kit lens, Canon RFS 18 to 150 millimeters. Why it matters? Because if you just see these two examples, yes, I mean, it is kit lens, but still, if you just see the details of this, well, rather un-Tuscany dock called Amba here back in Czech Republic, you see that the results are actually quite good. And I think this is quite important starting point that uh, even if you take just this very, very ordinary kit lens, you just probably will not be disappointed. What also should be mentioned at the very beginning is what are the trade-offs? So what would more advanced photographers be missing? And the, the reply is actually quite easy. The only really important difference is the level of controls. If you, for instance, take Canon R10, which uh, would be from a very similar category, but uh, as the numbering suggests, it's higher in the Canon's logic, it would have more controls, more buttons, which uh, means that the control of autofocusing would be somehow easier. But what really matters, and you will see it soon in more detail, is that the autofocusing systems and the image quality uh, produced by the sensor are just really good. Especially the ability of the autofocus system to catch, for instance, the eyes of the dog here is, uh, I think, just very good. And uh, if you would be pondering if you shouldn't get more expensive camera, then you should probably know that even with that cheap one, you are really able to achieve brilliant results because you can really rely on the autofocusing. And again, as we will see in the next minutes, the image quality is just very decent. These are photos taken back home in the Czech Republic, but these are first photos from Tuscany. And as I was there in the mid-March, the green hills started to be really green and all was uh, so picturesque and amazing. So not only the nature, but obviously all these famous old stone cities. And this is just a photo which I believe really defines Tuscany. A lot of sun, a lot of shadows and uh, sort of mysterious streets which are just really amazing. And let's go further, some more examples which I believe should give you some idea of how that camera operates and which sort of pictures should you be expecting. 
and my rented car in the vineyards of Tuscany. This is rather boring stuff, but at the same time, it gives us a chance to see that first, even the kit lens can provide you with some really decent results. And if you have a chance to take a photo of, say, a lady who is selling this amazing wine, you know that you have just a couple of seconds to, to finish it. And again, you have to rely on your autofocusing. And again, you see it really worked out well. So it's really what matters that even if you are more experienced photographer, you will not probably be disappointed. It will not be your first choice, obviously, but you are able to squeeze a really surprisingly good results <laughs> as here at the location of probably the most photographed tower of the world. One more point, and it is the speed. As I mentioned, uh, the camera is capable of up to 15 frames per second, which is quite decent. And you can see on a situation like that, that uh, the lady in the streets of Siena just did not have a chance to escape the autofocusing system, which is quite good. And 15 frames, it sounds really good for that category of camera, obviously. And one more technical point, the ISO results are quite decent. Here are examples taken with different ISO speeds starting from 3200, going up to the maximum ISO, which is 51200, which is here. Obviously, <laughs> you will find a lot of noise here, but that's how it is. You sh we just should not be surprised. But if we go back to the level of 3200, this is not bad at all, which we should expect. But then if we go, for instance, here, this would be 25,600. Obviously, you will find a lot of noise, but under certain circumstances, you probably would be able to live with this results. And one more point, if you venture into the menu, you will probably find setting called HDR, which means high dynamic range, basically meaning the ability of the camera to make the dark parts lighter. And now, if you are an experienced photographer, you now are probably saying something. Oh, no, just stay away from HDR. And yes, you would be right. For many, many, many years, uh, any usage of automatic HDR in any camera would just end up in something with wild colors and uh, really poor results. But it's surprisingly not that big disaster here. If you if you just see this famous Etruscan gate, this is just a shot taken without the HDR function. And these are examples of the HDR. I have to say that these results are not that tragic. And uh, well, for some users, they even might make sense. And now let us see some more controls in the live preview. And if you do not care much, you can just jump to the last part and dozens of test photos. Right. Uh, let us discuss briefly what are the main controls of this camera. Obviously, if we start here on the, the upper part, you wouldn't be much surprised. There is the main dial where you switch uh, different programs. And uh, obviously, you can even start shooting uh, video from here. But I'll just stick to my favorite aperture priority. So if we are here, there are some important controls. Obviously, there is, here is the key control, key dial, which to be used in combination with some other options. Uh, one of these would be that very handy ISO button, which is very good that Canon has included that directly. So the button is called ISO, and we can uh, set the ISO levels. And let's move to the back side. Uh, again, info button would not bring much surprise, I guess, because it is simply the key tool to uh, switch between different views, different types of what you actually see. Uh, one of the most common button would be that for the exposure compensation, the plus minus. Simply when you have the feeling uh, the uh, photo is too dark, you can just tell your camera, please make it lighter or darker but at the same time uh, so now i'm just you know using this uh, this roller in the upper part of the camera but now if i just click on the plus minus sign once again 
it now turns to the control of aperture. So basically, if you are an uh, experienced photographer, you'll be using that very often. And sometimes it's a little bit annoying because uh, if you need to control your uh, exposure compensation, quickly and at the same time to change the levels of your aperture it can be sometimes quite demanding then we have q button which again would give us a quick way of setting whatever we want to set so for instance you can change white balance you can see directly what has been changed and uh, or picture style uh, which gives you a chance to change the feel and look of the JPEGs. What matters most is uh, the setting of focusing and autofocusing systems. We have basically three points where we want to set it here in the menu. First place would be here, obviously, where you define how many points do you want to use. And uh, so you can go very quickly like this if you want just the spot uh, AF or some more complex like flexible zone that's important it basically tells us tells the camera if I just uh, press the button now regardless where I turn it's still focused so if I now move the point away it is still focused so that's the quickest explanation what uh, one shot would be and the servo is what is extremely important to grasp and understand and servo means that if I am just moving with this the, the level of sharpness just moves as well which is useful because if the bird now starts flying towards me <laughs> it would still be uh, sharp and focused which is useful so this is again very important set of uh, what we want to know about our camera uh, when we have opened that topic let's move to another button which is right here on the back side and it gives us uh, again a quick way how to command uh, what we want to achieve if I just press it you have some options you have a quite important shortcut if I hit menu you see that the the, the point is not in the center so if I now hit it it jumped to the center which is really useful because quite often you can just get lost uh, that little thing can really spare a lot of time and a lot of energy and also do not forget that you have the option to press ISO and the ISO gives us a chance once again very quickly to get to that important setting of the points and again here is the key info button so let me just move the camera away from my tripod you see if the info is off uh, what happens is that uh, again the point is moving all the time you know it's still in the center of uh, the frame which is useful sometimes but what we want to achieve is that so if i now activate it and i hit info look at what happens I can by half pressing the shutter button very easily lock what I want to be focused and uh, this is just extremely extremely important because we, we've mentioned that there are some things this camera is missing and one of them would be the the quick dials which would give us a chance to control the focusing and focusing points so just imagine you have a group of people or animals so it is very useful just to hit the button the the shutter button to the half and you lock it and even if you move like i do here it would still be locked so this is just extremely important way how to control what you want to control in let's say a among group of people or animals or whatever so this is just so important and here comes the last part which basically should give you a chance to see more than 100 test photos taken within four days of my Tuscany trip and again uh, let me repeat that all these photos are just unedited so no Photoshop no Lightroom these are just JPEGs directly from the camera the and uh, as you can see again the results are quite decent 
Yes, obviously, if you are an owner of full frame or some fancy prime lenses, you just would find some, you know, imperfections. But again, my point would be that uh, that camera makes sense for those of owners who just do not want to use their mobiles or their cell phones, their smartphones, and they just want to be sure that uh, that sort of camera would give them some enhanced opportunities. And typically this would be the example of a shot which could hardly be achieved with a smartphone. And one more sunsets over the most famous tower of Europe, I guess. And now let's take the car and let's go to the hills of Tuscany. And again, I just wanted to use this camera in the proper manner of a tourist and somebody who does not really know much about how all that world of mirrorless would work. So, and I was sort of politely surprised because again, you can have that camera on the backside of your car and you can just go and the results would be as good as these shots here. Obviously, <laughs> what should be said for 100 years, what applies to any shooting, any photos is that basically it's done not by the camera, but uh, it's always combination of light and not only light, but also composition. So let's go to the famous city of Monte Pulciano, where it's a good idea to drink coffee and get a glass of wine. And yes, these photos might look a bit boring or uh, they can even remind you of uh, what <laughs> typical production of your smartphone. But hold on. I think these are just good examples uh, which uh, can just show you that even with that very basic camera, you're able to produce some good structure of your image. You're able to uh, get a decent bouquet, decent blurred background in shots like that, which is something which uh, beginners quite often overlook. They think, oh, if I want to have a background blurred, I need to have some fancy prime lens. Yes, I mean, if you have a fancy prime lens, that would be a really good idea. But even if you do not have a really great lens, you can still produce that sort of effect. And this is the evidence that even the key square of Monte Pulciano can be empty, like here in this spring March day. It's much better to focus on wine than on coffee here. And here again, typical touristic situation when we have that lady who is posing with that amazing wine of Monte Pulciano. And we know that we have a couple of seconds uh, for that shot. And again, you can see that we can rely on uh, the autofocus and it, that it really works well. Without that, it just would be really, really pain, but it works just great here. So, more shots of amazing landscape of Tuscany. And again, I have to admit, I was a little bit, as I already mentioned, suspicious about the lens I was using. I mean, if you just look at these shots from another stone city of Tuscany, you probably would agree that the results are quite good and uh, that, first of all, they serve exactly the purpose they should. They are just very good photos for a camera which doesn't really cost much, which is very small and which can just be hidden in your car or in your backpack. One more detail. This is the example of HDR. I mean, the automatic HDR, which is just able quite decently, I have to say, just take away the shadows and just give us a chance to have that balanced photo. And one more night city. And these are the shots you have already partly seen in the opening sequence. If you ask me what would be the most typical light of Tuscany in the spring, that would be my answer. And a good example of a situation when you really need a good autofocus, you really need to have a tool which allows you to control what is happening there. Obviously, it's up to you which of these shots you would prefer if you just want to have it darker or lighter. But just to have a chance to correct all these things, you have to know that the autofocus will work well. And it, it just does. And it just does. And for me, that is the key photos from uh, the trip. Some more shots of the city from the sunshine and one more complex light and one less complex and less complicated cat. And if you would like to see some details of uh, the cat's eyes, you again can see that the details are 
crisp and clear. And one more shot, more complicated line, but again you can see that the results are really good for that type of camera. And some more shots, some more touristic details from old beautiful cities. And uh, really, I do believe that you see what I have seen. And um, it is the simple fact that, yes, Canon R50 with some its limitations, like the limitations uh, with controls, etc., still offers a really very decent camera for beginners or even more advanced photographers. And uh, if you just know a couple of tricks, you will be just really pleased. What counts even more if you know a couple of these little composition tricks, like incorporating some lines and some shadows, which help us to create a feeling of 3D in the photos. And probably the most important and most beautiful towers in the Tuscany. We started in Siena, so perhaps we should wrap it up here and again a couple of final closing shots from that beautiful city and colors provided by Canon R50. And you might ask me what do I think about video and I have to say that I'm not a big specialist in video so I am just not feeling to give you any really good summary how good or bad it is. So the only thing I can do and I am doing right now is just to show you some examples in 4K. But I think I can go as far as saying that since we are using a bigger sensor, much bigger than a sensor of your smartphone, that even even here the results would just be much 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 better so even if you just test it you'll probably be surprised how great shots you are able to get so thank you so much for your attention i do indeed hope you got some idea of what to think about canon r50 i believe it gives you a quite decent combination of price performance speed and image quality. So thank you so much. I am Jan from Prague, currently in Tuscany. Take care.